Hello, viewers. Welcome to the program name Let Your Health Be Your Concern. This program is brought to you by World Media Production and It's Pro. If you are, it is the first time watching this video or this program, you can call a friend to call a friend. You can call a family member. Just call him and tell him that there is a program with the title Let Your Health Be Your Concern. When we say let your health be your concern, we are thinking about how our system works, how the individual organs coordinate with each other, and how the system works within the body. So if you are watching us today, I will, I will urge you to call a friend to call a friend, call a brother to call a brother, call a sister to call a brother, share the link, share the link to your people, your friends, your sisters, your mom, your aunties, which whomever you know, and wherever you're watching me, good evening to everyone. This is the program by the title, Let Your Health Be Your Concern. The, host, the program is being hosted by Kwame Baden. Kwame Baden. So you can call me Kwame anytime, anywhere you see me. So welcome to the program with the title, Let Your Health Be Your Concern. It's here if you're not awful, the program, Let Your Health Be Your Concern. Program here Saturday be a seven to eight. The UTA ya. Beti ma fre wa dam for now fre unya fre o papa fre wa dam for say a program na ya tu ni ding. Ma wa pumu ding ya we niya di na ni ya de bro. A program be UTA. A ma unhu se na obe tutu wa na ma e wa pumu ding areas. Se na unhu se u ya fit ana on ya fit. Se na obe unhu se bibi how wa u di mu a obe unhu se oh bibi se na e pesa e ya me. Now what you want a more in them? It is a good time here. A program here to need let your health be your concern. A program here here to need let your health be your concern. A it ma kumi nu na asoma sing. It ma ba kono ya eight pro training center. Ya ka eight pro training center. A ya ya bi ya omo titi kofu mo muniya S I E K C S C S K. Omo sang ya C S C S and a construction card into so and then a u u tia ya free number ne wa se no. You bet you now. The upper so you be a boy of Amawaye now. Your mama a boarding crater, a certificate. Bet me the age more. We are safe and be a being it Germany, being it Holland, being it America. So, so your security or your construction, it's more quite there. It's pro, it's pro training center. It's pro training center. Oh, bet you my from I'm a true for you to 0744-888-9490. And now I say, Ube Tima Frons was 0795626936. 0795626936. Ube Tiu, no, um, the upper so you be a Oma Boal. I feel so, eh, you may deal so, eh, world media production. You can say world media production, eh, that will your program be to say where then, who can we are graduation B for a world media production. No, I'm not going to be a cotton thing. Therefore, make a commercial break. Now, me bar the major media. I'm not going let your heart be your concern. No, the abre it here for I'm also much heavy. No, boss, me. Now you know who fear. I won't be any now. As of your people cry to it. Offer, major man say. Me need to be here. Oh, need to be here. Now, who is a ticket here? Offer. Me you going to get a certificate? Oh, offer. Yeah, now, for you to come on this certificate. Oh, you're not going to come on certificate. A ITS Pro Center. She, I feel me now. She, you probably have a training room. You're not going to be a pay. And then, you're not going to be a pay. If you have to solve for a baby, you're going to be a pay. You're going to be a pay. You're going to be a pay. Now, you're going to be a pay. You're going to be a pay. And you're going to be a pay. ITS Pro Center. ITS Pro Center, I mean, find it is pro. I just say, yeah, 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 teaching club, your mount SIA license. Now, but with your real security, now you have a pair of man. Who just said, yeah, net and go for a human sign, no one yet, you man. But be a maker for more. I, yeah, ITS Pro Center. I want any bit of your mount here by four days, but perfect. Now, it's like a certificate. It's the other thing, as I was now, I can't have so many of my ITS Pro Training Center. And yeah, as I inquire near you. Yes, 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 y
on Sabah Saka, health and safety certificate. So, and do it why are they? And if you have a good way, I'm going to be on training. Ah, I'm going to share with you on site. It's me, I'm going to. Welcome back to the show. Let your heart be your concern. This evening, I have a special guest with me. He is very intellectual. He has so many ideas. He has worked in different kind of departments within the medical field. He has the knowledge in any aspect of medical. So I have a special guest with me. I will, I will introduce him so that he will give us the, the, the information that he has for us today. And today we'll be talking about the topic, why COVID? Why COVID? Didn't see a COVID. Because of COVID, a COVID didn't see and then I am passing far now in the moon or better. So, before I may introduce you, know, today we have a guest, but I will allow him to say a little thing, a little about himself so that he introduces us what he does and what he is doing in his department. So, I have a special guest by name Rahu Simvit. So, Rahu Simvit, good evening and welcome to Interior TV. Good evening, thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. We um, thank, we thank God. I'm very oh. well, yes. Yeah, it's Rahul. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can see, since last year, people have been going through difficulties. They have been blockades in different areas. People have not been able to go on with their daily activities. So, Rahul, before I introduce you, can you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Sure. So I'm a specialist biomedical scientist uh, in microbiology at St. George's currently. And uh, I have worked in this field for over 10 years now. Uh, I have been within medical microbiology for over 10 years. So I've had that experience of working with infectious diseases. Uh, what I do in the lab is um, we get various patients. We get uh, patients with severe infections. We grow the bacteria responsible and we uh, uh, process sensitivities to check what the bacteria is resistant or sensitive to. And we release that information to the doctors and doctors obviously release it to the patients and start the line of treatment. So this is, in a nutshell, this is what I do. I work with bacteria and viruses. <laughs> yeah, Rahul, is it only St. George's University Hospital you've worked before or you've worked in different no, hospitals? No, so I've, I've worked at the Royal Free Hospital previously and I have also worked at a private laboratory uh, which uh, is the H HSL, which is Health Services Laboratories. And now, for now, I'm going to a private lab again. I am going to healthcare, HCA Laboratories in central London. And okay. I start next week. Yeah, that's, that's really, really good. That's really good. So, so, yeah, so, and I'm going there as a senior specialist biomedical scientist. Oh, okay. So, yeah, obviously a little bit more responsibility and a little bit more work, hopefully. <laughs> that's, that's really good. That's really good. So Rahul, today we'll be talking about a very sensitive subject, COVID. COVID. Sure. The subject is COVID. So people yes. have been hearing it, COVID, when, when you watch the telly, it's about COVID, COVID. What is COVID? So as we all know, what is it? COVID is a virus. It's a virus that has uh, entered our life and turned it upside down, basically. Uh, we've been used to viruses. We've seen outbreaks before. But obviously, in this day and age, uh, we uh, almost think we, were, we are invincible. But this virus has come in and it's affected so many of us. The, the reason why it's so easily transmittable, its virulence and its transmission is at such a high rate that we've never seen anything like this before. And uh, it's infecting most of the world's population, 111 million worldwide now, which is quite a big chunk of population. So yes, that's it's a virus and it's caused a pandemic around the world. Okay, Rahul, can you tell me a little bit about the epidemiology of the virus? Sure. So the virus basically it's an RNA virus. So it basically uses the RNA as its genetic material rather than the DNA. Oh, yeah. 
it is uh, a normal uh, classified as a normal coronavirus, which are mostly respiratory causing viruses. So the COVID is a type of the SARS, which is the severe acute respiratory syndrome virus. Okay. Uh, the virus, basically what it does is it, it has proteins. If you've ever seen, you must have seen photos of the virus online. Yeah. It has spike shaped proteins on the edges. Okay. So these proteins, these molecules float in the air when, when the, the virus is present in the environment and they can easily enter our airways mm -hmm. through our nostril, through the mouth. Once it's within the mouth, it uh, latches on to ACE receptors. These are receptors, proteins found within various cells of our body. It's very easy for the virus to come in. Once it's in there, it obviously makes the immune system work, go into overdrive and work harder than it should, causing all sorts of illnesses. Okay, okay, okay. So, Rahu, if I will get you well, is, is, is it only human that the virus attack? Not necessarily. Um, it's very interesting around the world. We've seen many cases of uh, various uh, animals, in fact, being affected. There have been cases in Japan, in Singapore, of dogs uh, having the same coronavirus 2 uh, virus. So it's, it's all over. Um, some, some animals, it's a zoonotic virus. So obviously animals carry it naturally rather than it affecting them. Uh, it's a known fact that bats have the coronavirus in them. Uh, mink in Denmark. Thousands and thousands of mink were culled in Denmark because they were known to have this virus and were able to transmit this to humans. So within the animals, what is the mode of transfer? Within the so animals? within the animals, it could be, uh, if we take into the theory of uh, uh, mouth to body uh, ingestion, so it could be meat, okay. uh, this animal meat. If Now some, some viruses uh, need extremely high temperatures to okay. you know, uh, disappear and to be less effective. Uh, so if this virus stays on the meat and it's ingested by, it's consumed by another human, it's very easily that it can come through. Uh, it can also come through if there's a pet and the pet hasn't been infected the, with the virus coming in contact okay. uh, with the feces. You know, there's many theories out there, but okay. it's definitely uh, a carrier amongst animals. Okay, okay, okay. It, it seems you're making a clear point. So Rahu, uh, we people doesn't know the causes of the virus, can you elaborate us on the causes of the virus? What causes the coronavirus? So coronavirus now um, is very transmissible from person to person. So the first and foremost cause is coming into contact or close contact or even contact uh, less than uh, six feet, basically. And if that person is infected, if that person coughs or sneezes, not necessarily, uh, but they might pass it on to you. So the, hence the reason why we wash our hands, sanitize them, the face mask, because this, the face mask, the nose and the mouth is a, is a very good pass, passage for the virus to enter the human body. So hence we need these coverings. The other causes are uh, patients admitted into hospitals. Uh, if there's an outbreak within a hospital, there are, there are chances whether uh, that other patients might catch it. However, the infection control within hospitals is extremely good. So it's highly unlikely that other patients may catch, but there is a possibility. Uh, that's what I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, if I could, I could be clear, Rahu, I, I sitting here now, I, I may be infected with COVID, but what are some of the signs and symptoms that I will identify or I will, I will, I will be able to identify to know that, oh, I'm, I'm having, um, I'm prone to the COVID-19? So the first and foremost symptom that you should uh, worry about having COVID-19 is temperature, high temperature. Okay. Uh, that usually the onset of high temperature can be anywhere within two days uh, up to the rest of the 14 day incubation period of the virus. The other symptom is loss of taste and smell. This is a very common symptom seen amongst uh, most people infected. Uh, feeling tiredness, lethargy, muscle pain. There are many symptoms, but a temperature is a very high temperature is a very good symptom of having the virus. Okay, if you say temperature, it's not only the coronavirus which is linked to temperature, there are other diseases in case when I'm having a high temperature at home, I know that oh, it, will, it will be a malaria or it will be a typhoid. So I will not bother myself to go to the hospital to go and seek for medical attention. So if you say that the high temperature is mostly the, the, the sign, one of the signs. Yes. It, it's it maybe is, but different it's a, disease. So what, what is the difference between the 
high temperature within the COVID? So the difference between high temperature is uh, obviously it's not always seen as, as COVID is very asymptomatic in patients as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of patients are very asymptomatic, so they never get high temperature, but it is classified as one of the symptoms associated with loss of smell, loss of taste. What, these two go hand in hand, which, which from what I've read and what I've heard uh, and noticed, what, people who usually have high temperature, uh, they usually lose taste or smell. And that is very common with the flu virus, which is coronavirus. Flu, coronavirus is a type of a flu virus. But as the other viruses, typhoid and any other infection or any other illness, there might be other conditions associated with it. Another thing is the climate we are in. Uh, coronavirus is so much around us, uh, there are, there's more likelihood of having coronavirus rather than any other illness catching it, you know, right now. Oh, okay, 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 yes. okay. And that's so, why a test is very, very important. If you have any symptoms, yeah. if getting a test done is extremely, extremely important. Okay, you, you taking me to the test, I will try and ask you some few questions about the test. What, what, sure. You being in the lab or you being the senior member of the medical team in the lab, what are some of the tests that you guys go through or you guys perform at the lab? So there's various types of tests. Uh, currently uh, at St. George's, there's a massive uh, uh, coronavirus lab, uh, which has you know a specialized facility that has started and they are using various analyzers, various machines. But the techniques that I have worked on and I have used is uh, we use a PCR technique, which is a polymerase chain reaction technique. It's essentially, um, com in common terms, it is uh, basically amplifying the DNA of the virus, creating a long uh, amplified virus, and then uh, checking whether it's positive or not. So we do uh, the PCR test. We also do a rapid test, which is a quick test where you get a result within 20 or 30 minutes. So, Ra so Rahu, yes. I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm yes. fine. I'm, I'm, I can see some signs and, signs and symptoms. I've walked to yes. the uh, A&E. So what mm -hmm. is the first test the doctors has requested for them to go and do some tests. So what is the first test that the, you guys do if the person is so, showing some signs and symptoms? So we wouldn't, firstly, we, if, if we, any of us have symptoms or we are showing signs, uh, going to a &E is highly not recommended. I would not uh, go, because then there is a chance of infecting other patients and, and you know what's, the best thing is to call 111 and they will come home and test. So the test, when we get these tests, uh, if it's an urgent test, and most of them are PCR tests we get. So what it is, is uh, it's, it's basically we target the antigen rather than the antibody. Okay. So a PCR test targets the antigen for coronavirus within the, within the sample of the patient. Okay. And rather than it telling us an immune, whether the body has an immune response to it, which the antibody tests do. The antibody tests are going to tell you whether you have an antibody in your body or not. So if you're if you've had corona or you haven't, but as a PCR can tell you if it's there in your body right now, the DNA. Okay. So, the PCR yeah. will tell you whether you have the the virus now. Currently, exactly. Whereas okay. uh, antibody test is for the generic population. It's used. Uh, it's effective where uh, areas, uh, entire areas. If you want to screen an entire area, these are effective and cheaper. Run. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, oh, okay. So yes. after after running the test and being seen whether it's positive or negative, how what is the duration of the test? Is the test twenty four hours, thirty three days, or four days? So the the PCR test is fairly quick. The turnaround time is uh, between twenty four and forty eight hours. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we receive the swab, we have various runs which are scheduled through to the day, and in each run, about ninety six samples go on at one time. But then there are various other machines where you could have more amount of samples going in. Uh, and these runs carry on throughout the day as a 24 hour service currently. So the output is massive. Uh, the gen and uh, the turnaround time is within 24 to 48 hours. We convey the results to the ward that these are the positive and the negative patients. And then the ward obviously contacts infection control and uh, the process moves along from there. Okay, the process moves along from there. So, yeah. for instance, Rahu, I've, I've done my test today, and within the 42 yeah. hours, I'm traveling to, yeah. let me say, Africa. Is it possible I need to do the test before or after I get to my country? So, it is advisable to do a test two days before you leave, 
and it's also advisable once you land in your in your country of destination it's also advisable to do uh, some countries have different day frame time frames i do know for a fact that you need to get a test another test done within two or three days of landing okay so you need two tests essentially okay 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 yes. so is the test free uh, in the uk it's absolutely free if you have or your family members anybody has symptoms uh, they should contact and get a test booked it's absolutely free uh, you can drive in there are various drive in centers available you don't even have to step out of your car they take your swab into the car and off you go you come home and you get a result via message within uh, 48 hours and it's oh. free other countries are ch there, there may be a price there may be a charge uh, but in the uk it's free okay okay so rahul let's go to the point whereby we will, we will know the number of cases that you guys receive every day or every week. Can you tell us a little about the, the numbers that you guys receive in your lab? Sure. So the numbers are anywhere between about 600 to, at the peak last year, in April and May and June, that was the peak of the, the cases because everybody was getting screened in a rush. So it can range from about 600 a day to you know, about 1,500, 1,600 samples in a day. Oh, only your lab, or? Only our lab, yeah. And this is one laboratory in Southwest London. So UK-wise, the numbers are phenomenal. They are in the hundreds of thousands of tests being done every day. Okay. And, and, and how many positive sam samples do you get out of the number reported? So currently, it's not that bad. Currently, it's the ratio is very low um it's less than one percent even so it's not that many samples that are coming up positive because as we can see uh, nationwide especially in london it's dropping okay the lockdown is seen to have worked this time okay uh, fellow viewers if you are watching us this is the program let your health be your concern i'm here with rahul simvit he's one of the intellectuals he's, uh, he's a senior biomedical scientist in St. George's University Hospital. I've gotten him here. I'm trying to pull him a little bit to explain things for us so that we will get the details about some issues around the COVID. But I would like to go for a commercial break. When I come back, we will get back to senior biomedical scientists so that you explain further to us. So if you are listening to us, call a friend to call a friend, watch the program. Baby, <laughs> Pro center. And what any bit of amount here? By four days, perfect, perfect. Now we'll start our certificate. And the other thing I was never gonna catch up with you anymore. ITL Pro Training Center. No. And your SIS, I'm going to you. Yeah, yes, CSCS card. So I can't. CSCS card. So no. I just one day training. Now we will answer. We'll start our second health and safety certificate. So I do it one day. And if you have got four days, I'm gonna be on training. Ah, I'm going to share my site. It's been a little bit of a photo. I'm going to And then you want to make it. But my dear, no fray. I was on the best way. So, for number 079 04 68 462-11172. ITS Pro Training Center. Address 453 to 457 1st floor. Leverage Road. E10 7E. Buses do one one. Bomadiana brand. Yeah. And the phone was over your bar. 
no so bet me a work construction and security. It would be a fray. No, you can't work as a yes, I'll talk as an answer. Twenty cent a week. That's a great twenty cent a week. Welcome back to the program. Let your health be a concern. This evening, I have a gentleman who is very intellectual, who is very experienced in the medical field by name Rahu Timvit. So he's here with me now. We we're, were trying to go through some questions, which he has explained it further. So call us, viewers. If you are listening to me, you can call the studio line. The studio line is pinned under the screen. So you can call and ask questions. Any question you want to ask, any form of question you want to ask, Rahu is ready to answer you because he is the expert. He is having the knowledge about the COVID. COVID. So anything you can call him now, call the number been under the program so that he can explain things to you. So, Rahu, yes, welcome back I... from the commercial break. Yeah, I have a very wonderful question here. What are some of the people, what are some of the percentage of people who die out of the COVID? So uh, infection-wise, me, you, everyone is, you know, obviously susceptible to infection, but the death rate has been seen amongst people who are mostly people in their over, the senior citizens, as we call them, people over 65, people over 70s. Uh, also, people with heart diseases, coronary heart diseases, diabetes, hypertension, asthma. So people who have these illnesses, they uh, already have their immune system working stronger, harder. Uh, and more uh, to fight fight more damage. So once the virus infects in the body, this the body is already weak enough, so it cannot always fight and win and fight the virus. So so people who are at high risk are obviously senior citizens uh, and uh, people with an underlying major health condition. But but can you give me a, a figure a figure that shows some records of people for instance in your lab you say you run about thousand samples yes you have some few positive ones among it so yes. can you tell me in your hospital the number of yes. people who die a day in your hospital out of the covid so a number currently it's not i am not very well aware of the exact exact figure as of now yeah. but uh, as of today but the rate has been about 60 people a day to 70 people a day, even to about 120 people a day that have been dying. And uh, from what we've seen, most of these people already, they were, in, they were admitted into the hospital for uh, another care, another treatment, or they have an undergoing health condition going on. And these are the most, these are the people who unfortunately uh, are dying from this virus. Okay, if, if I can get you clear, you mean the, the, those people who are being admitted with different cases, and do you think they, yes. they, they, they get the disease, they, they, they are infected with the coronavirus within the hospital or outside the hospital? Not necessarily. They could have had it with, when, before they came into the hospital. They, that's why no visitors are allowed currently uh, into the hospital. Or, uh, you know, it's very limited. Visiting hours have been very, very restricted and limited. So they could have had it from outside when they entered the hospital. Uh, so, you know, there is no means to worry that if you have something, uh, you should not be thinking twice that, oh, should I be going to the hospital? You should always go to the hospital if you have anything that you think needs to be seen. It's always good to get yourself to the hospital. Yeah. R yeah. Rahu, you, you, you made mention of the people who are at risk of dying are the senior citizens. But nowadays, yes. you can see the young people also dying among the... Among the Few and far between. There are cases, I agree. Yes, there, there have been some cases where, and in these cases, uh, it all boils down, according to me, according to what I believe is, uh, coronavirus usually causes a cytokine storm in the body. It's a term called a cytokine storm, where your immune system uh, goes into overdrive and it works very fast and cytokines are released into the body. Now, when these are released, these are inflammation causing uh, things, you know, so your body obviously gets more inflammated and obviously, but it's a very, it's a very small population of the people who, you know, in a young age who are actually dying from coronavirus. Okay. Young age dying out young. because, because recently we had some young guys who died out of coronavirus. And I was thinking, they are already saying that it's within the senior citizens, but why are the young ones also dying? 
few and far, yes, I, I agree. And it could also be people might, might have a condition without knowing it. So somebody could have, uh, a young person might have hypertension and the person does not know it yet. They might have a few episodes, but they haven't gotten it checked. And uh, an, another, another interesting thing is, uh, depending on how much viral load of the virus that you have got, okay. your infection can be severe, less or more severe. If you so, have a huge viral load that you've acquired, uh, of course, then your infection also can be very severe. Okay, so within your test diet, the PCR that you guys do in the hospital, do you check the viral load too? Uh, not no, we don't check the viral load because the viral load test is a different count. Uh, yes, but we do get a figure. We do get how much of the, what is the value. So we give that value, but there is another test to actually check the viral load of the virus. Okay, okay. This, this, this time around, Rahul, I will take you to a very serious situation because people are saying the blacks are dying out of the COVID more than the whites. Is it, is it any idea or any information that you can give you to us at, around those areas? Uh, I'm not 100% sure if this is true that, you know, black or Asian or any other ethnic minorities are dying more than white uh, people. But what I, I, what I've, from what I've been reading and from what I've been thinking, I've come across this interesting thing that if you look across uh, uh, employment within yeah. care homes, within hospitals, within uh, uh, various government institutions, uh, there are lots of uh, black doctors, radiographers, nurses, uh, you know, Asian radiographers, nurses. So obviously this proportion of the community has a more higher chance of coming into contact with people infected with coronavirus as they work in that setting. Uh, so that could be one of the reasons why why uh, uh, these communities are, uh, or these ethnic groups are acquiring the virus faster than the whiter community. Uh, but that's, that's one aspect of it. Um, but there are other studies being done right now as to do with uh, vitamin D. Uh, levels and it'll be interesting to see what comes out. Uh, there's actually been a study done where uh, having low vitamin D, does that increase your chance of acquiring the virus or getting more serious? So nothing, we, we don't know much about it yet, but I hope we do soon. Okay. Um, viewers, if you are watching at this the program, let your health be your concern. The host is Kwame Baidin and I have a very gentleman, very intellectual, Rahu Sinvit. So call us, you can call in and ask any question you want to ask. Rahu is ready to answer your question. So call a friend to call a friend to ask questions about the current COVID situation. Rahu is here, very ready to answer every question. Rahu, let's go to the next question. Is, sure. is this COVID issue having implication in the, on the individual and the economy as a whole? Can you, let's go to the individual before we come to the economy. Sure. So the individuals build the economy. So once the individuals are affected, the economy has to and is will be affected big time. So yes, the individuals are having major, it is having a major financial impact. Uh, firstly, obviously, uh, those who have been most hit are those who have been without a job. Um, uh, those who, even those who are on furlough, uh, getting 70% or 60% of your wages obviously uh, does not cover the cost because costs are rising up. So people have lost jobs and uh, the economy is taking a hit uh, big time. Um, also, if a working member within a family gets infected with the virus, the implications are massive on the entire family. The, there's a whole family of four, for example, self-isolating. You know, it has a financial and a mental impact uh, on the whole population. How, how does it affect people mentally? Can you elaborate on that point? So feeling of isolation can be a very big factor to affect people mentally. Uh, people within a certain age group, uh, it, it, it obviously it can affect anyone within a certain age group or not. It's not limited to anyone. It can affect someone who's 10 to it can or low, or it can affect to someone who's 100 and above. So it's affecting mentally, like people are isolated. They cannot celebrate things as we would. People cannot go out for holidays. These are things we do to... Uh, exert the daily pressures of our life. We go out, we have a party. These are things, simple things we can't do. And that is having a mental impact on people. Enter TV. TV. The home of good education. My, grandma, my grandmother is having the COVID. He has gone for the vaccination, but still is finding the signs and symptoms. So what then do I do? Do I have to take him back or 
So uh, uh, if she has already had the vaccine, there are a few cases where people are still acquiring it, depending on when the virus actually entered the body. She could have, the virus could have ingested itself a day or two prior to, you know, her getting the vaccine and then still showing symptoms. So it would be ideal to call 111 again and get her retested. Yeah, the next person is saying, Rahul, now with the, pardon me, the, the, the COVID doesn't show any signs and symptoms. Yes, uh, there are many. Uh, the new variant is, uh, is an example of that. It's not showing any signs and symptoms, hence it's uncontrollable. So you, you unknowingly might be passing it on and you would have no idea. Uh, the only way to figure this out or uh, uh, know whether you had it or you've given it to someone is if you've passed it to a contact of you and if they, get, they get start showing symptoms, it might be ringing alarm bells for you whether you should also get tested. Okay, we should also get tested. So yes. we'll go for a commercial break, and when we come back, we will continue with the wonderful topic, why COVID? Back to the program, once again, the, the Let Your Health Be Your Concern program I have with me, Rahul Simrit. He's a medical expert, he's a senior biomedical in the field of microbiology. So he's here to explain one or two things around the COVID. So he's on the, he's on the line. So anybody who wants to ask a question, you can call in so that Rahul will answer your question for you. So Rahul is a medical staff who works in St. George's. He has worked in St. George's for several years and is, is expert in microbiology. He's, he's in the field of microbiology. So if you have any question concerning the COVID, I'm calling and asking about that. So Rahul, Hi, yeah. Before, before, I would like to ask this wonderful question. Someone is asking, what are some of the measures to control the COVID-19? The COVID so the greatest measure and the greatest uh, life change that we've seen ever since COVID came is the wearing of the masks. Uh, wearing a face mask is extremely important, essential in large public gatherings or even outside in shops and supermarkets. Uh, washing your hands. Uh, and washing it, not just rinsing water and leaving it, washing it for a good 20 seconds with soap, rubbing it, using uh, a hand sanitizer. These are measures we can all use daily to, obviously it won't stop it completely, but it will get it to a level where we can deal with it. We'll get to a lower level. Yeah, Rahul, if you say we should wash our hand and do the necessary precautions, yeah. let's, let's compare this to our people back home. Is it possible they can get the finance to buy all those things and how are no. we how I, are I, we I agree i agree it isn't possible it's not completely possible and uh, so they could maintain they should maintain precaution as and where they can or whichever way they can uh, if they cannot wash their hands periodically if they cannot use that much soap they should probably wear a mask or or put something around their hands so they will avoid contact with people but uh, uh, various measures are being taken all over the world but sanitation is the greatest, greatest measure, and not just for COVID. I believe uh, for forever, for our, for the whole you know lifetime of this universe, if we improve our sanitary techniques, sanitation techniques, it should be it should be much better for everyone. You can you can see nowadays people who uses the train. You can see that people are trying to board the train without any space, without any distance. I can't. I've, I've been complaining about this thing several times. People travel without the importance of traveling. People go to places where yeah. they are not supposed to go. So is it, is it advisable? They, say that they are saying that social distancing should exactly. be one of the measures. But people are not be. complying with it. So how then Absolutely. do we... <laughs> Absolutely. So it's, it's, then it comes down to rather than... If we look about people, if we talk about the general population, and if majority are not implying or not complying with it, then it then it comes down to the single population, us as a person, we or you as a person. How can I play my part? How can so at least if I do my thing, I'm making that much of a difference. And I have seen, I agree, uh, people are cramming up on the trains. You know, it's it's packed again every morning, every evening. Uh, and I believe for now, what people's mentality has become is at the end of the day, they need food on the table. So. The virus they cannot see, whereas they can see if they are hungry, they can feel it. So they have to go to work 
and uh, get some money on the table. Well, when you get the money and you are, you are infected with the disease, the money that you, 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 you struggle exactly. for, is, it will not make any importance to you. Exactly, exactly, absolutely. Hence, it's not advisable to follow this. And, and now, this is the most important time to follow all this because we are almost, you know, we are over the peak. We are coming to an end with this. So if we follow it now, we can get rid of it once and for all. Okay, okay. If you follow it now, you can get it once and for all. So yeah, we, before uh, we will wrap things up, I have some very strong two questions that we, I would like us to go through. Rahul, yes. how are people participating in the injection of the COVID vaccination? Uh, uh, enormously, tremendously. There's a very good response as, as if we talk about the whole country as a whole, uh, 15 million vaccinations, you know, the only country to have done so many vaccinations in such a good time. So people's participation is enormous, massive. There are uh, yeah, there are. There have been some few misses, people who cannot turn up for the appointments. But as a whole, uh, the participation is good. Yeah, there are questions around it. People are skeptical whether they should have the vaccine or not. Uh, uh, but what I advise and what my advice would be, yes, uh, we should all have the vaccine if we have an opportunity. Yeah, Rahul, uh, a simple. Have you gone for your vaccine? Yes, I have had my vaccine. The first jab, yes. So what will you tell your fellow friends or your, your, your colleagues who have not gone for the vaccine? I would request everyone uh, who haven't had or who are thinking about it, if you have an opportunity, please do go and get yourself vaccinated. Uh, it's not just for you, it's for everyone at, at, at your house, you know, your family, your friends, people who are closest to you. So please get vaccinated. It's safe. Uh, uh, I've had my vaccination apart from the sharp scratch initially and a slight bit of pain for a day. I did not feel any other complications. And uh, uh, it gives you some sort of confidence, you know, to go out again once you've had the vaccination because you know you are kind of safe from it. Okay. So, Raul, what are the vaccines? We have people are coming out with different vaccines. What are some of the names of the vaccines? We can see that in UK we have two vaccines. Have what two are the names. name of the vaccines? So, so we have the Pfizer vaccine and then we have the Moderna vaccine. Okay. Uh, which is the All from UK. In the UK, yeah. Uh, now there are other vaccines that are coming in, such as the Novavax and vaccines from all over the world. Are, but these two are the main vaccines that are being used in the UK. Uh, personally, I've had the Pfizer vaccine. And uh, so these vaccines, basically, if you would want me to go into a slight bit of detail, I can explain how they work and what it is. Um, the vaccine essentially is an mRNA vaccine. So okay. it's a mRNA is a messenger RNA. So what it does is the vaccine actually encodes the protein of the coronavirus. Okay. And that, that, that means is given it, it to you. bounces around, it, it, it covers the, yeah. It, it covers the, uh, the sharp protein, which is at the outer surface of the coronavirus. Okay. And that's given to you. Now, once that enters your body, your body automatically pro produces an immune response okay. because it's a foreign body coming into you. Your body produces an immune response and produces antibodies. Okay. Over time, the mRNA and its protein will get washed out of the body. What will remain is the antibodies. So, so how many how you, many days? If you say to wash out from the body, how many days, how many months, how many years does it take to wash out from the body? So the mRNA and the actual protein, the spike protein that you have been given, that goes away fairly quickly. Once antibodies have been produced in the body, it could okay. range between three to three days to a week or more. Once that has been produced in your body, then you don't need the mRNA. You do not need the protein. All you need is uh, uh, the vaccine, which is which which you have already. So and the antibody. So if you are exposed to coronavirus, your body will know what to do okay. because it's already been exposed in the past. Okay. So it okay. turns yes. Is 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 that is there any signs and symptoms of taking those two medications? Uh, the most common symptom is uh, just a slight pain of the arm, you know, ranging from anywhere from a few hours to a day. Uh, uh, but that's the most common symptom. There is nothing uh, untoward. Yes, there have been reports in the news and the media about uh, some cases, but uh, uh, I haven't looked into it too much. But apart from that, it's pretty much safe and it's advisable that everyone takes it. Okay. I, I saw a video last two weeks concerning people taking the medication and having the serious side effects on the social media. Is, is, is it possible that can happen? People are collapsing, people are having seizures. 
I highly doubt that uh, it can happen uh, because if we look at 15 million population of the UK uh, having the vaccine, I'm sure uh, if that were true, we would have a lot of people <laughs> uh, shaking, shaken up after getting the vaccine and we haven't had. So I highly doubt that uh, unless it's coming from a, you know, a medical journal or it's coming from a medical program which has been verified, I would not uh, believe it. And I'm, I can talk out of experience as I've had it and I'm here and I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay. So, yes. so Rahul, I want to have the medication. So where should yeah. I go for the medication? So uh, currently, uh, previously uh, it was the older citizens and currently the, uh, uh, the government all over UK, over 65s and NHS workers and other key workers and ambulance staff, police, currently they are, it's their uh, turn to get the vaccination as of moment. And once, if you, if you fall into one of these categories, you should surely get a letter uh, from the NHS and it is free for all and they give you an appointment. So you will get your first vaccine and uh, eight to 10 weeks after that, you should get your second vaccine. Those. So if it's eight to 10 weeks before you get a second vaccine and in case of one, there's a problem within the gap they've given you, would that yeah. show any side effect or it will cause any problem to the system? So various studies have shown that the first dose is between 75 to 95% effective against getting coronavirus. However, for the vaccine to be completely 100% effective, you need the second dose as well. Uh, it's like a key that you need the second key to unlock it completely. So uh, the first dose is more than enough to, to have protection from the virus. So I've taken the first dose I don't, yes. and I decide not to take the second dose. Is that any complication? There could be very well complications. It is, uh, and this is a, it's a territory where we don't know what is happening, but uh, uh, the studies that have been done that have shown the effectiveness of the virus have only been done on people who've had both their doses of the vaccines. So it is advisable to take both the doses. Okay. So if I take the medication, for instance, I've, I've been to the hospital, I've taken the medication, I came home two to three days, I, 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 I tried to find some signs and symptoms within the medication, where should I go, whom should I call, or whom should I contact? So again, if you feel any symptoms, even though you've had the vaccine, uh, you should again call 111. You should let them know that you are developing symptoms and signs and you need to uh, get, or you need to, you can, if you have access to online, you can go online and book a test uh, done. It, there, uh, there should be one in your area and it's a drive-in test and they will give you an appointment when and where to come in. And oh. as you are showing symptoms, if you tell them you are showing symptoms and if you have symptoms, uh, they will test you uh, obviously uh, quicker and quickly because they don't want you to spread it to other people unknowingly knowingly okay okay you don't want you to spread it to other people so exactly yeah. rahul before we end the program i have a question which is very 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 <clears throat> worrying me it's, it's giving me headache sure the question is is it safe to take the medication because people back home still call have you yes. guys taken the medication yes. is, is, is that any side effect even in the uk here when you meet your colleague and he knows yeah. that you work in the NHS, he asks you, have you taken your medication? Did you see any yeah. signs and symptoms? So is it advisable to take the medication? Or what do you have for your fellow friends, colleagues, family members about the medication that will encourage them to go for the medication? I believe it's highly advisable to have the vaccine. Uh, it's very, very essential that we, we protect each other, our friends, our families. These are our, our, our you know, uh, loved ones, we have to protect us and them. So, and uh, as as we know, there are not any major side effects from the vaccine, and uh, I haven't had any. So, I believe it's highly advisable to take it, and uh, the sooner rather than later. As soon as people have an opportunity, have a chance, they should go and get themselves vaccinated. Okay. So, Rahu, do you think there's a time coming that people will pay for the medication in the UK? Uh, I believe for now uh, it's free and I doubt there will be a time where people will pay for the vaccine because uh, it isn't the interest of everyone to protect everyone. You know, if, if uh, there can be an example where if somebody who cannot afford to pay might not get tested and they are obviously out there spreading the virus to everyone. So I would highly doubt that uh, we will have to pay for this vaccine. I don't think so. And I believe vaccines save about 4 million lives every year. You know, 4 million children are saved every year because of vaccines. They are so important. Uh, if we did not have vaccines, the, 
we wouldn't be where we are as a as a world you know right now okay we wouldn't be where we are as we yeah. are now right now so rahul thanks very much for your contribution but before you go do you have any social handles or do you have anything to say to your colleagues your friends or your family members Oh, all I would say is thank you. Thank you to you, Kwame, and the TV and uh, all family, friends, whoever's watching it, you know, thank you. And I hope it helps. If it helps one person, that's one job done. And it's it's good. It has a, it should have an impact and an effect on society because we have to look after each other. Um, no, and I, all I would say is uh, just be safe. Uh, the end is here. The end of the virus is here. New beginnings are here. So be safe, pull this off, and we should all be able to celebrate and live life the way we are used to. Okay, we also celebrate and live life to where we are now. So, yes. Rahul, I will take this opportunity to thank you very much for making this time for us. We in TTFA TV, we say very thank you to you for coming to our program, for explaining things to others to know where to step, what to do within this COVID era. Thanks very much. We just had an interview with a Rahul Simvit. He's one of the experts. He's one of the medical expertise in St. George's University Hospital. He was able to explain what is COVID, the importance of COVID, the causes of COVID, measures to taking in place. Is it, is it safe to take the medication? He explained everything to us. So now I know fellow viewers, if you are watching us, I know you're making a decision to rush to the center to go for your medication so that your life will never be the same. Thanks. Thanks very much. So if you are watching me, always make sure you follow the precaution, wash your hands, max up, and do what is expected of you. Thank you for watching us. Thank you. See you next week, the same time. Bye-bye.